Juice is one of my favorite movies of all time. Let's talk about it. Storyline is like this. Four young black males, tight like glue. Now we want to see what happens when these four black males try to grow up and we all go in different directions. That's exactly what the storyline is. It deals with a lot of fear, peer pressure. It deals with a lot of like young black males being trapped in today's society and the kind of um, reactionary things that we do to get out of it. Juice came out in 1992. I was a freshman in high school and the hype around this movie was huge. I remember seeing the trailer. I don't believe I saw it in the theater. I'm pretty sure I saw it at home via VHS when it did come out probably a few months after. Like I did a lot of movies at that time because, you know, it wasn't really that easy to get into movies like Juice, like Boys in the Hood, like Colors when you were a young kid back in the day. But I do remember this movie traveling around the neighborhood, man. Everybody had this movie. Everybody watched this movie and everybody quoted every single line from this movie. It was directed by Ernest Dickerson, and it starred Omar Epps, Jermaine Hopkins, Khalil Kane, and of course, the late, great Tupac Shakur. On the set, the motion picture juice, Fab Five Freddy with one of the stars of the movie, Tupac from Digital Underground. You from Oaktown? I'm originally from New York, but I live in Oaktown. Yeah, there we go. Oh, man, went cross country to get large, coming back yeah. to get larger. So this was 92. This would have been in between Tupac's first album and his second album, if I do believe. I, Tupacalypse Now, 1991. The movie comes out in 92. And then Strictly Four Months comes out. In 93. So this was right after Pac's debut album. And it did show Pac's amazing acting chops. I don't think this movie would have been the same if Tupac were not the lead character. Now Tupac auditioned for the film twice. The first time he actually auditioned for Q, which is the role that later went to Omar Epps. But director Ernest Dickerson was so impressed by Tupac's performance that he personally asked him to stay around and audition for another part, which was the role of Bishop. Man, what a classic character that was. So he ended up agreeing and the rest is history. I was looking for young actors. I was looking for unknown artists. My casting director interviewed hundreds of kids, maybe even thousands. We went to high schools that are performing arts. We went to neighborhood theater groups. Now, several actors and rappers actually auditioned for the role of Bishop. Daryl Mitchell, very popular actor at the time. Donald Faison, you may remember him from Scrubs. Could you imagine Donald Faison as Bishop? How would that have been? Not, huh. Interesting. Tretch, Tretch from Naughty by Nature, actually auditioned as well. One day, Tretch came in from Naughty by Nature. He auditioned and uh, did a pretty good job because he is in the movie. But he had a this, this guy that was with him. And Money B. That's right, Money B from Digital Underground also audition as a matter of fact tupac allegedly accompanied money b to the audition and that's when Pac asked to read shakur apparently nailed the role when he threw a chair during his audition basically that got him the role i said well what about you you want to audition he said yeah sure why not so I gave him the sides, originally for Q. So he took the sides and went away and came back and did a pretty good job. But at that time, I pretty much figured I knew who my Q was. I was having a hard time finding Bishop. And I just said to him, hey man, thanks a lot, but can you stay longer and read for this role? And I gave him the sides for Bishop. He went away, came back, did Bishop, did a very good job. I said, okay, what's your name? He said, Tupac. Wow, man, could you imagine if Money B played Bishop? 
Tretch from Naughty by Nature. I think he would have been a good bishop. Tretch actually was in the movie. He was part of the Rodaman, Rodaman crew. Or what was it? Rodaman, uh, the Puerto Rican clique that, uh, that used to mess with Bishop throughout the movie. You can see Tretch in the back playing a dark-skinned Puerto Rican. But yeah, definitely Tretch. Tretch would have played a good. He Tretch was really good in Jason's lyric. That's one I got to do. Also, I got to do Jason's lyric. I got to do a movie review on Jason's lyric, based out of Houston, Texas. That is a good underrated hood movie. So I got to make a mental note. Remind me, somebody, make sure they remind me in the near future as well to do Jason's lyric. That's a good one. Omar Epps stated in an interview once that Tupac wanted to stay in character so much that he would aggressively ask cast and crew members to call him bishop instead of tupac on the set that is a thing that a lot of actors do they feel that they stay in character it's going to be easier to go with the flow when the director yells action it's not it's not easy being an actor man acting is pretty rough i did theater for years it's fun and a lot of it comes natural but Think about the lines that you have to memorize. Think about the settings. Think about the placement. Think about all the stuff, the character you have to build. If you're doing accents, you got to do an accent. I mean, being an actor is not really easy. But yeah, 92, what? Boys in the Hood had just came out before that. You know, we had Colors a couple years before that. And I think Menace to Society is right behind this movie or, or right in front of it. One or the other. There was a, this was the Hood movie era, right? Is, is it safe to say? But Juice was right up there, man. And it gave us a glimpse of what was going on in New York. I'm from LA, 3,000 miles away. I had no idea what's going on in New York. And this was a great movie to watch to give me a little idea of the culture of New York. And I really enjoyed it. But the, the original poster to the film actually featured Tupac holding a gun pressed to his chest. And that was airbrushed out because Paramount Pictures was like, nah, we can't roll with that on the cover. A bunch of people were protesting, apparently, and saying that it was sending a bad message to the african-american youth which i get i get that I, I completely understand and this was right around the time where 1992 it was crazy everywhere it was crazy especially in los angeles definitely so i can only imagine what kind of riffraff this movie brought to the movie theaters i'm pretty sure there are a story or two about somebody getting roughed up at a movie theater or two you know based on going to see this movie because that was happening a lot People were literally losing their lives to go see Colors. People were losing their lives to go watch Boys in the Hood. People were losing their lives to go watch South Central. It was a crappy time, man. 92, you think you think it was it's bad now and it's getting it's almost getting there, but it was really bad in the 90s for civilians, gangsters, for everybody in between. <laughs> 